In 1909, there was a train en route from Philadelphia to Pittsburgh. And as it traveled through the central part of the state near Lewistown, Pennsylvania, the conductor suddenly heard three loud bangs. Dynamite had blown off the cow catcher and some of the headlight units on the train. Though it took some time, the conductor stopped the train. And there, a bandit who was masked approached the train with two revolvers, shot several warning shots, and demanded that all money that was on the train be offloaded into the woods nearby. Scared for their lives, those on the train, including the conductor, helped to carry bags of coins, gold, silver, and paper money into the woods nearby. The thief then demanded that the conductor get all the people back on the train and leave immediately. He fired two warning shots to show that he was serious. Sometime later, when police arrived on the scene after receiving a call from this conductor at the next station, they discovered a number of bags of gold and silver and currency laying in the woods right where they were placed. It seems the masked bandit left with the lowest denomination of currency possible, bags of 1909 freshly minted pennies from Philadelphia. In 1954, some hunters were walking in the woods in that vicinity. One of them slipped in the steep hillside and when he looked around himself, he noticed that there were hundreds, even thousands of pennies all around him. They were badly corroded, and they all had stamped on them the date 1909. But based on newspaper articles and other records, that's a fraction of the amount of pennies that the robber had taken. Somewhere out there in the mountains of Pennsylvania are still a whole bunch of 1909 pennies, worth quite a bit because of their collecting value. If you're like most people, treasure hunting is something that's intriguing. I think part of what fascinates us about treasure hunting is that it's almost always linked to some kind of story that involved either drama or somebody who didn't trust banks and hid stuff away. There's a bit of information, but we don't have the complete facts on what exactly took place. There's usually history involved. And of course, it doesn't hurt that if you find the treasure, it's probably worth something. I've put together a real treasure hunt for you, all of you. And if you follow the clues, someone will be able to take home a gold eagle coin. But before I explain how that can take place, let's talk about some treasure in the Bible. If you have a Bible, open up to Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. And today we're going to start in the eighth verse. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me. I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Luke 15 is one of the most iconic passages in all of the Bible. It describes Jesus talking, giving three stories, three parables about what God's love is like for every single person on the face of the earth, how much he desires for each person to be in relationship with him. The first story talks about a sheep that's lost and a shepherd that is willing to sacrifice everything to be able to go and find that one lost sheep. The third story is the most famous of the three and it talks about the prodigal son. The son who asked for his father's inheritance even before his dad died and then went off and squandered it in all kinds of immoral living and then returns back home and all during this time the loving father has been watching for him, looking for him, longing for him to come back home. The middle story is the story we just read. It's of a woman who has lost a coin in her house and she can't find it. If you look at the archaeological digs that have taken place in the Bible lands and the reconstructions of houses from that time, of a peasant person, a poor person, described in the story by Jesus, 
you can see why it would have been easy for this woman to have lost a coin. Most Jewish houses would have had no windows in them. If they had any windows at all, it would have been one small circular window usually, which would let in only limited sunlight. So Jesus' story tells us that she lights a lamp and that she actually sweeps the floor, a dirt floor, looking for this lost coin. I guess you could say, at least in some ways, she's on a treasure hunt for something that she has lost. And it was something that was really precious to her too. Notice that it said that she had 10 coins and she was missing one of them. What's the significance of this? Well, Jewish women, when they got married, would have spent the prior months saving up these 10 coins to be made into a headdress. And they would have been worn at special times in her life, including at her marriage ceremony. She would have worn her headdress to the market when she got food. On special occasions, she would have placed this on her head. It was like a wedding ring is for us today. And now she has lost one of those coins. It's like a diamond falling out of a set on a woman's ring. It's not complete anymore. And the deep symbolism of losing what represents your marriage is really important. After looking extensively for this lost coin, the woman finds the coin. And she celebrates by contacting her friends and her family. Because the missing piece from her headdress has been found. And now that special item, dear to her heart, has been restored once again. All three of these stories about things that are lost, the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son, carry a couple of similar features in each of the stories. First, something that is important is lost in each of these stories. A sheep, a coin, and a valued son. When it's discovered that something is lost, a huge hunt goes underway for each of these precious things. And when they are found, there is a huge amount of rejoicing. So much so that the celebration actually cues the angels in heaven to celebrate. Of course, when Jesus spoke in parables, when he told stories, they represented something bigger than the immediate context. What Jesus was talking about in each of these stories is how dear every single person is to God. How he's willing to move heaven and earth to help a person know that they're loved by him. And just like each of the people in these stories, the shepherd who has a lost sheep, the woman who has lost her coin, and the father who has lost his son, they search intensely to find what is lost. That's how God sees you. He wants you to be close to him. And it's clear from the scriptures that the only way to be right with God and be close to him is to confess our sin, to acknowledge what Jesus Christ did on the cross, to take away our sin, and then to walk in obedience after God. I mentioned to you that I have a treasure hunt planned for you if you want to participate. There are a couple of important ground rules for you to understand if you want to take part in this. The first is that you're looking for a metal box that looks like this. Inside it is a note. On one side, you'll find this written. And on the other side are directions on how to retrieve the gold coin prize. The treasure is hidden on public land in Erie County, Pennsylvania. That means you don't need to go on anyone's private land to find this treasure. You may want to do some of your searching in the location that I'm in right now. Maybe somewhere near the city. Or it could be in or near a small community like this. Don't rule out the west side of the county. It could be north or south of this interstate. Or to the east or the west on this big road. Out here in the woods, in one of the local parks, don't forget all the county schools. Maybe amidst the hustle and bustle, there are certainly plenty of hiding places out here. Maybe out here somewhere. 
Maybe it's hidden near here. It may be near here. Perhaps in the vicinity of the animals. So I guess if you haven't figured it out already, the treasure can be found just about anywhere as long as it's on public property in Erie County, Pennsylvania. And how will you find it? Because even though I eliminated most of Erie County for you, most of it is privately owned. There is still a lot of acreage in the mix because we have quite a bit of public land. Each day for 31 days, starting today in this video, I will release one clue via the YouTube channel. Some of the clues will be straightforward. Other ones are not meant to be taken literally. They'll require your imagination. Furthermore, these clues will not be given in the order in which they will most make sense. So over time, you'll have to discern which clues are giving you big picture ideas of where to look and which ones are honing you in so that you can find the exact location on earth that that treasure is hidden. My hope and prayer is that as you take time to participate in this treasure hunt, it will help you understand better how much God longs, how much he searches, how much he's looking for you because to him, you are treasure. You are a person of invaluable worth. You are precious in his sight. And that's not only true of you, it's true of the almost 300,000 people that reside in Erie County, Pennsylvania. And it's also true of the 8 billion or so people that live on the face of the earth. Every single one of them created in God's image and dearly loved by him. And he wants to be involved in your life. And so as you spend time processing these clues and searching, going out on foot, trying to figure out where the treasure is, I hope it will reinforce the idea that God seeks after you, that he's looking for you all the time. And all you have to do is turn to him. And in a moment, he's there with open arms saying, I love you. Why the treasure? In a practical way, I think it is a good thing for people, families, couples, individuals to just be able to go out and spend some time outdoors. It is in an outdoor location. But secondly, I hope that through this whole process that God will work on your heart and soul to help you know that you are treasure beyond anything that you can think or imagine. God bless you as you look for this treasure. And I pray that if you don't already know him, that you might come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as well. Amen.